Hi, Kathy. My name is Kutwan. Can you please uh, help me with the question on meiosis? Here, guys. Now you have to. When you see something like this, you have to be quite careful. It says the diagram below represents a phase during meiosis in a female human body. Now, they immediately, the minute you see female, you know they are talking about oogenesis because if it was a male body, they would it would be spermatogenesis. All right, so. Only four pairs of chromosomes are represented in the diagram, namely pairs 18, 19, 20, and 21. So let's look at our diagram. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Do you see this here? This is called non-disjunction. And it's almost like maths where you have a double negative. So disjunction means to separate. Non-disjunction means that this didn't separate. And this here is problematic because you end up with trisomy. But let's look at our question. So here are our little chromosomes. They Remember, they are chromosome pairs. Something I do want to show you here first before we go anywhere because this generally, I just want to get to my extend page. Okay, look here. This is how you identify. You have interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. It's IPMAT. This is the same, it's the same words when you have mitosis and for meiosis. So meiosis 1 and then meiosis 2 is only from prophase to telophase. So interphase, okay, for interphase it is the in-between phase. Okay, now if it's the in-between phase, when you look at that nucleus, you can see nothing. The cell looks normal because everything that's happening in here is, is chemical. This is prophase. Now, prophase starts with a P and it is your prep phase. It's the preparation phase and this is where you're going to see crossing over. So again, when we look at our cell and the nuclear membrane is now disintegrated, your little chromosome pairs are sitting all over. They like, there's, there's no set place where they are and you'll see them crossing over etc so they scattered all over this uh, all over that nucleus or cell okay metaphase all right is your middle phase so middle m for meta m for middle when you look at it all your little chromos uh, uh, your little chromosomes are lined up here at the equator Okay, there'll never be an uneven number, by the way. They'll all be lined up at the equator, so that's not very difficult. They're in the middle. Anaphase. Okay, anaphase starts with an A, and think of a way, ay, 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 a way or a part, whichever suits you. So a way or a part, and that is when you've got your poles and you have your little chromosomes, and they are now moving, four of them, I should just put two, but anyway, they're there. And the spindles are pulling them towards the poles. They're moving away from each other. And then this T is telophase. And telophase is your terminal phase. Terminal means to end. Okay, so after meiosis one, you end up with two daughter cells and at the end of meiosis 2 there are four unidentical unidentical daughter cells so interphase you can't see anything prophase they all over the cell metaphase they're in the middle anaphase they're pulling apart telophase the end so boom boom or and you end up with four one two three four all right I hope that helps you identify because they often ask you to identify. So where are we now? There we go. Give the name of each of the following descriptions. It says the meiosis process in a female. Oh, it's oogenesis. And I mean, for heaven's sake, O is for producing the ovum. The plural of ovum, ova, or you can call it an egg Cell. It's not an egg. An egg is what you have for breakfast. It's an egg cell. 
It's also not a sperm. It's a sperm cell. All right, people? Egg cell, sperm cell. All righty. A pair of chromosomes such as number 18. So let's go look. Number 18, that pair of chromosomes is called a homologous pair of chromosomes. Okay, now, when it is homologous, it means that we, the homologous pair, we have one set or one chromosome from the father and we have one chromosome from the mother, all right? And they make up that homologous pair. And both these chromosomes clearly are going to have the same genetic material. So it will be, um, you'll have eye color, hair color, skin color, and you'll have the same on the father's chromosome and the mother's chromosome. So your homologous pair of chromosomes are for the same characteristics, okay, and the same genetic information. Um, so that's why you've got chromosome pair one, chromosome pair two, chromosome pair three, they all have different functions. All righty. Um, ba, 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 ba. Identify the phase visible in the diagram. Okay, let me just get my yellow here. The phase, what phase are we looking at here? What's happening to these chromosomes? They are pulling apart. And if they are uh, pulling apart, what phase is it? Come on, think, think, think. The phase is anaphase. But which anaphase? It's anaphase one because we still have homologous pairs of chromosomes. If it was meiosis 2, we would have sister chromatids. All right, and it would be early in a phase 1. Okay, motivate your answer. Well, that's easy. Um, the spindle fibers contract to pull one chromosome from the uh, one chromosome from the homologous pair towards each pole. Okay, so that's exactly what's happening here. Okay, the spindles start to contract and they pull one of each of the homologous pairs, pull it towards the opposite poles. That's also how we know that this is meiosis one. Alrighty. Give the term used to describe the mistake that occurs at chromosome 21. Okay, now I need for you to pay attention here. All right. That mistake is called, and I wrote it, non-disjunction. Okay, that's what the mistake is. This is, and I'm going to do this, when homologous chromosomes do not, or fail, do not separate during anaphase 1, or when um, daughter, uh, daughter or sister chromosome, uh, um, chromatids do not separate, separate during anaphase two. That is when you're going to get non-disjunction. All right, now, with non-disjunction, you're going to have an extra chromosome where it shouldn't be. So how many chromosomes will each of the four daughter cells have? So two daughter cells will have 22 chromosomes, okay? Because four daughter cells is at the end of this meiosis. And 
two daughter cells will have 24 chromosomes. Okay, now how did that work? Okay, so this one's going to have one extra chromosome. How does it work? I have 46 chromosomes in a normal, that's your diploid cell. This would be your germinal epithelium where oogenesis takes place. Okay, and remember this is two sets of chromosomes. So I'm going to write you two sets. So it's got two sets of chromosomes, one from dad, one from mom. Okay, meiosis one takes place. Here we have 22 and 24. Okay, why? Because of non-disjunction uh, non having taken place. These are now haploid, so they have one set of chromosomes, and this one's going to have one set of chromosomes plus one. Then we have meiosis 2 happening. Okay, this becomes 2, 22, this is 22, this one is 24, and this one is 24. This one becomes the ovum, or the egg cell, and these three become your polar bodies. Okay, uh, polar bodies. All right, so check our last question. If an ovum of this kind, uh, mentioned in five is fertilized by a normal sperm cell, it learns to, now remember trisomy means you've got three, tri is three, three chromosomes for a specific chromosomes for a specific uh, a set of characteristics. The, uh, uh, give the defect, this type of trisomy, it's Down syndrome. Okay, so I'm almost done here. Let me just quickly show you. So you're going to have the sperm cell with 23 chromosomes, the little ovum, and I'm going to put S cell. This has got 24, and when they join, we end up with 46 chromos uh, uh, sorry, 46 plus 1, that extra plus 1 here. So we end up with 47 chromosomes. That gives you your Down syndrome, child. And people, that's all we have time for.